So today, what we're going to discuss is finding success as a young black artist in Columbus, Ohio, and in particular, a young black female artist. Um, we have Francesca Miller. Can everybody please clap your hands? Ooh. Yes, yes. Francesca, how Sorry. are you doing? No. You're good. You're good. <laughs> Francesca, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I really am. Um, I was a little nervous, but then I see some familiar faces, so like my heart's all warm and fuzzy, and I'm cool. I think we're going to be good tonight. Cool, cool. That's what's up. That's what's up. So, you brought some art. Can you explain what this piece is, and what you were doing, when you made it, what you were thinking, what inspired it, where it come from? Absolutely. Um, so this piece is called Made in God's Image. Um, oh gosh, it's part of a series, Ivory Coast. This was made in, I believe, 2018, 2019. A friend of mine was having an exhibit called Black Girl Miracle. Um, and so I wanted to focus on colorism and just also, um, how even though we all come from like the same space, people of color coming from the motherland, uh, we come in different shapes and sizes and colors. So if you look really close, you can see that there's all these different shades of brown that are making up her face. And then of course I have uh, the Ivory Coast flag colors painted on her face as well. Um, like I said, it's part of a series, there's only two, but I wanted to just really like emphasize the beauty of like that natural hair. So she has these beautiful locks like mom. And, uh, and then yeah, I just used um, some like bronze and copper paint to create like this texture to it. I just thought that was a nice like experimental touch. Um, and yeah, that's, like I said, it was for this, this exhibit called Black Girl Miracle, just focusing on the miraculous creation of these black and brown people that we are. Um, and this was like really, to do this and both I call her sister piece, if you like scroll all the way through my Instagram, you'll see. Um, it was like, it was really empowering for me to paint this piece. Um, the whole time I was just, it was like black power in my bedroom, you know, <laughs> seriously though. I had the Lauren Hill playlist going, um, all these people, you know, just listening to these words. and I was just meditating on the beauty of who we are, you know, and as if any of you have heard me talk about my art before, I love to focus on the other side of our story, um, not just the oppression and the trauma and the pain, but our beauty, our dignity, um, our joy, all of that. So, yeah, that's where my headspace was in creating this piece. Cool, cool okay. Um, so recently, you just experienced something that a lot of people dream to experience. <laughs> so, could you share what has recently happened with you and your art? Yeah, so uh, recently I launched a t-shirt ca capsule with Abercrombie & Fitch. Um, three t-shirt designs for their Equity and Justice capsule and it's titled For Justice For Joy. Um, and they chose to name it that, modeled after my artwork. Like I said, that emphasizes on black joy. Um, wow, such a surreal thing. Like, seriously, I'm still on a high. And like, they reached out to me in December, the shirts launched, I think, last week. Um, everybody's buying them, which is great. And I'm still just like, what planet am I on? You know, <laughs> like, is this really real? And there's a lot of reasons that I feel that way. Um, one of which being, I just started my art career, technically like last year, um, during the protest. When we were out here painting all these murals and everything, I quit my job and was like, I'm just gonna go for this full time. Um, and so to be just barely a year into it and something that huge happened, I was just like, whoa, you know? Um, and then obviously you have the part of it that you have this like very prestigious, like big deal company that's wanting to amplify black voices and wanting to bring attention to our beauty and to just our story um, as beings. So yeah, it's phenomenal. That's what's up. So you're ready to get deep. Yep. Okay. Always deep with Dante. Always okay. deep. So, <laughs> so y'all know how to do that. Um, so you just recently experienced a dream come true, um, being recognized for your artwork. But with every artist, there's a period where their art may not be recognized. Mm -hmm. Did you ever go through a phase in your life where you felt like your art wasn't recognized or put on display or given a chance like other art was. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Um, and I think especially like living in a world where social media is like the thing mm-hmm. nowadays, like that struggle was so real for me um, just a couple years ago. I'm doing a little better now, <laughs> thankfully. But yeah, I would put my work on Instagram, you know, have like all these followers. It would get like 35 likes. And I'd be like, I know that, okay. Like, I knew that that was good. <laughs> like, what's going on? Um, why is this not getting the attention? And it was like, I got stuck there. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't try to put my work into shows or get it in front of people because just the discouragement from not getting attention on social media, like, wounded me so deeply. It just kind of kept me and my art in my bedroom, honestly. Um, so, yes, I can definitely, definitely relate to that struggle, just not feeling seen or appreciated. So, what do you think goes through the mind of artists when they're in that space of not feeling appreciated or seen? Because art is supposed to be something where if it's something you created, Mm -hmm. that's it. Why do you think sometimes artists can get caught up in a space where they're thinking, are people paying attention Mm -hmm. to what it is I'm creating? Why is that? Um, I think we get caught up in things that don't matter most. We get too focused on what everybody else has to say or think or feel about our work um, when the focus should just be on us communicating the message as opposed to, I shouldn't say that's the sole focus, but I think like being in this mindset of like, this is a gift I have. This gift has a purpose and I'm going to use it whether one person looks at it and enjoys it or a whole room full of people look at it and enjoy it. Like, you have to just understand the weight of what you're putting out. Like, it's still just as significant, you know? Um, And that's what it took for me. I had to really sit down and have that conversation with myself and be like, okay, we're shifting focus here. Like, it's that same message of like, other people validating you, other people telling you how beautiful you are, whatever the case is, that doesn't define you. You know what I mean? It's like, that's a here or there type of thing. Like, you have to start within. So like, um, I had to tell myself like, okay, do I love my work? There came a period, I know I shared this with you before, where I didn't post on social media for a long time. I used to create work and immediately gotta post it, see who likes it. Oh, 25 likes, dang, this is terrible. You know, (laughs) whereas after that, like, I was like, okay, wait, we're gonna take our time with this. We're gonna really sit with this. how do I feel about it? I would really sit there and I would ask myself, like, how do I feel about this art? What is it speaking to me? What do I hope to convey to whoever views it? Um, and once I was okay with it, then I would share it to the public. And then it didn't matter if people liked it or not because I knew where I stood with it. Um, and it's so funny because after that, that's when it would gain more attention. <laughs> so right. Right. It's, like, it's funny how life just happens sometimes. Right. Okay. So what I heard you say is you got to a space where you began to love your work for what it was regardless of what other people had thought about it or if they validated it on social media. Mm -hmm. So getting to that space of loving your art, what is it like now? It's it's fantastic. (laughs) (laughs) It really is. I often reflect, I'm like, man, the growth in just like a couple of years. And it's funny because Like, art is always a reflection of, like, my own personal growth, how I view myself, you know. Um, And so... Uh, How did you view yourself? Huh? How did you view yourself? You going deeper? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, it's just a self-worth thing, you know. It was like, my self-worth was attached to other people, their validation, you know. I didn't really feel very valuable unless somebody acknowledged me. And that wasn't just in the art, it was just in general. Um, And it wasn't always a, it wasn't a very direct thing. You may not have known it, you know, but I knew obviously uh, from within. And so it was like simultaneously as I was learning to sit and love my work and process my work on my own, I was learning to sit and love myself, you know, and um, really get to know me on my own as well. so to be where I am now, I can genuinely, genuinely say, like, I'm proud of the work that I make. I can genuinely say, like, I'm growing in my identity as an artist. I'm growing to understand, like, what my message is, you know, what um, I want to communicate to the world through my work. And I'm not just making stuff that I think people will like, you know. Mm. There's a difference there. I, I feel like I did used to just create, like, okay, what do people respond to? Or, you know, what do I, what seems to be the hot thing right now? 
Um, no, <laughs> we're not doing that anymore. That's that's bondage. It really right. is. So yeah. That's interesting because that leads into the next question where. You know, sometimes artists can create what will pay or what they know will get attention and not what they want to create. Yeah. And I guess you can say within the past 20 years or so, black art has become a lot more embraced. Mm -hmm. um, African art has always been around, like, yeah. period. But um, when it comes to African-American artists, they're getting recognized much more. Mm -hmm. And they have the opportunity to create art that looks like them. Yeah. But there's still some people that are having difficulty creating art that reminds them of themselves. Yeah. What do you think is going on that are causing some people to not find comfort in it when things are changing? Mm -hmm. Like, what's going on to where they're not like, I'm just going to create pieces like this all of the time. Yeah. What's, what's stopping them? Oh, geez. That's, that's a... That's a layered conversation there. <laughs> we got time. Uh, <laughs> we always got time. No, um, I think, I, so I feel like there's a couple different angles. Break it down. Break it down. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so I think for those who, like, if you did want to take on the mindset of, like, they're afraid to create the art that looks like them, um, I think it would just be that concern. Well, A, I think it would be not being aware of the fact that times are changing. Like you said, our artwork, um, us being represented in our work, is being more embraced. Um, there is space for that definitely growing. Um, but I think there's also another side to it. I don't think it's just fear. I think, because um, I've had conversations with friends and we talk about wanting room to just be ourselves. Like being black, being a black artist is not like this monolithic thing where we all create something that looks like us, you know, like you have the artists who like, I just want to paint a flamingo. Right. <laughs> I just love flamingos. Right. Am I allowed to paint a flamingo without my black card being revoked? You know, <laughs> like, do I have to put Africa in the corner of the flamingo <laughs> to be a black artist? And that's, that is the conversation that's like very layered as far as what is a black artist, you know, and that struggle with like, what am I allowed to make? Um, so that's why I say it's so layered because it's like, uh, it's not always that we're afraid, you know, there, I think that's definitely there, but it's the other side of like, there's more to me than just the color of my skin, you know, so. So do you believe that a black artist can separate themselves from always doing black art? Are they always a black artist even if they're not doing black art? Absolutely. You're an artist and you're black. <laughs> why? So why, why is it difficult for people to believe? It's like, oh, okay, we got a black artist that's doing something besides African symbols. And, and, you know, like, why is that so difficult for people to perceive? Or why is it difficult for people to embrace that you just want to paint a flamingo? I think it's why? kind of the same as, like, where you have black people that get made fun of for watching anime and wanting to be mm -hmm. skateboarders. You know, it's like this accusation that you're not black enough. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like just that term of Oreo, whatever, you know, stuff like that. Wow. Um, so I think it's it's the same thing. It just spills over into all different realms of society. Um, yeah, that's, wow. that's the answer. That's, that's interesting <laughs> because what I just heard was sometimes as black artists, either our art isn't black enough or it's too black. And how do you please anybody when you gotta find a healthy balance between those two things? It's like, what am I supposed to create? Mm -hmm. Am I able to create what I want to create when I want to create? Yeah. That's, that's deep. It is. Um, so, as a young artist, mm -hmm. I would say you've experienced what I would consider to be success, and I don't think you consider it to be success. Yeah. Absolutely. So, at a young age, how did you find so much success? Like, what was the process like? Is there a blueprint to it? Was it the, being around the right people? What was it? You know what? Honestly, I feel like to even say there's a blueprint is so hard. Because everybody's journey looks so different. You know, I could sit here and I could say, oh, you got you to gotta network. You got to connect with the right people. You got to, you know, uh, practice, practice, practice. Things like that, and that stuff is definitely valid. Um, I think the favor I may have had was I grew up in the art scene. 
I've been in art camps ever since I was a child, um, and just constantly connected to artists. My art teachers are now my art peers, and I'm now teaching their children, you know, um, so I always stay plugged in. Um, but yeah, like I said, everybody's journey is so different because you have those who just kind of popped up out of nowhere. Right. <laughs> it's like, who are you? Right. Um, right. Right. And just like have taken over in ways as well. So it's hard to like really say this is the blueprint, this is the um, the path to follow. I think the answer is just like be authentically you, you know. Um, and yes, like push your work. Yes, make those connections. Try to put your work in shows, whatever. Like just follow your dream, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. That's it. So what happens when you follow your dream, Francesca? <laughs> you the partner with Abercrombie and Fitch. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, it's like everything just finds you, you know? And some people would come for me with that. Like, that's just been my experience. I can only speak from my own story. Um, like I said, I feel like I just came to this place where I learned to sit with my art love my art I learned to sit with myself and love myself and I think naturally that it shows in my artwork now the fact that I love myself and I'm, I'm comfortable in who I am growing in my identity it's showing in my work and people are attracted to it you know um, yeah that's a, a deep spiritual concept so I'll stay away if you want to <laughs> I mean you could get deep if you want to but yeah. um <laughs> but we, we talked about a little bit earlier how you went through a stage where you were a little conscious of your art. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been a moment where you wanted to give up on your art? Yeah. Um, there's been there's been a couple of those. Honestly, there came a period of like I just hit a real low place, like a real low place for like a couple of years. Um, so I've loved art since I was a child. I always knew I wanted to be an artist. High school, the, I mean, the fire was burning. I was like, I'm about to open an art center. <laughs> like, everybody in the city gonna come. We're gonna be making all kinds of art, not just visual. We're gonna dance, paint, everything, you know. Um, and then I don't even really know. I do know what happened. What um, happened? <laughs> Dante is too deep. It's too deep. No, it's too deep. Um, I, I got into this place where I just allow I just gave over the rights to who I was you know I was in um, just specific connections <laughs> where I just lost myself I really did um, and then art my love for my art slowly began to die from that like just in losing myself and um, letting other people define what was so for those who don't know I have like other artistic abilities not just painting and drawing I sing I write music and all of that and I feel like there just came a time where I was pushed more towards like the musical side and just those other components. Like this is who you are, this is who you're supposed to be. Um, and I was like, well, maybe, maybe the art's not that big a deal, you know? Um, and I don't know, just the motivation, everything was just really sucked out of me. You can even see it, like it's evidence in my sketchbooks. When you look at the time frame, it went from color, vibrancy to, to just like, unfinished sketches, just pencil lines and eraser marks for like years in some of my sketchbooks. Um, and that was rough. Like I remember I would lay in my room and cry. Like I would, my sketchbook would be on my bed and I'm like, why can't I make anything? I actually have a specific drawing um, in my sketchbook. It's just an outline of a silhouette and there's a big question mark in the middle. And it's just like all these questions. Like, why can't I create, you know, like what's wrong with me? Just, I was just, you talk about artist block. <laughs> that was, I don't know. That was deep. It was deep. So, as you were going through that, mm -hmm. did you believe that you were going to find your way back to the artistry? Honestly, I couldn't see it. I really couldn't. I was like, I know, like just in life in general, honestly, I was like, I know that like there's not any... I know that I'm not hopeless, I just can't find hope. <laughs> it's here somewhere, but it's like, it's hiding real good. <laughs> um, yeah, so like, in the, at that time, like I said, I wasn't like, oh, I'm done with art altogether, but I was just, it was almost like a numbness or something. Like, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I couldn't see beyond that moment. Um, yeah, that's where we were with that. So, when I say I rejoice today, <laughs> <laughs> like if people only knew, they only knew. But yeah, got you. 
Okay, um, so, you know, this is my favorite story. I always tell her to tell this story. Oh, God. <laughs> but can you tell them about your very first mural project <laughs> and all the things you've been able to do today? Yeah. Please yeah. tell the us. The mural with the, with the, uh, <laughs> the firefighter with her eye all the way on her ear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so I was a sophomore in college at OSU. They had this program where you kind of just like write up a dream of something you want to do in like your personal or personal development, career, whatever area of life really. Why did I go and find a wall that was like 27 feet wow. uh, tall and 70 feet wide and stucco was the surface? Anybody ever tried to paint on stucco? Like, oh my gosh. So here you have like this but I was like 19, 20 year old out here. Yeah, we're gonna stand on this like crooked electrician's ladder and <laughs> risk our lives <laughs> to paint on this wall. Um, but yeah, so I did that in the Linden area, Cleveland Avenue, massive wall. And um, it was entitled Dream Again. It was the Greater Linden Dream Again project. And I just knew I was about to go out here and change everybody's life with this beautiful picture. <laughs> I was making jokes because literally the firefighter's eye was like on her ear. <laughs> like, why didn't anybody review this sketch? But um, yeah, so, but it was honestly, it was a great process. Like, I learned a lot. And even though, so we did finish the mural, kind of, and they covered it up, unfortunately, <laughs> which, you know, we got some work. No, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay because mm -hmm. look now, art everywhere, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it was a great process because. It showed me that like what I wanted was really what I wanted. Like I really did want community connection through my art. And so even though, yeah, it wasn't the most beautiful picture and it didn't stay up there, um, the connections I made are still intact. Right. You know, and in that process, the community saw like, there's this little girl who cares about us. Right. You know, my buddy Kanye, right. my little brother, he and him, I didn't know him at all. He just showed up one day, this little boy. He was like, I think nine or something at the time. Probably at 10. He showed up, like, hey, can we paint with you? Sure. He showed up every single day. He touched the brush once. <laughs> and we worked on that mural for like months. But he showed up every day. Didn't touch the brush again, but he was there. Um, and I remember when him and like his little friend, they were like, we like you. And I said, why? Is it because you care about us. There ain't nobody out here doing this for us. Mm -hmm. A little 11 year old could process that. Somebody mm -hmm. taking time to come and like help make their space look nice. Um, that that was an act of love. And I was like, see this, this is exactly why I do this. Wow. Yeah, but um, I can talk about that for days. Yeah. Just that whole mural, the funny stuff. Yeah, <laughs> the, it's, it's, the, so, so I was out there recording <laughs> and it was happening. A lot of funny stuff happened, but um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, what I saw was, you know, usually when you're walking around in a neighborhood, you walk past people. You don't say anything. You don't look them in the eye. But you saw this community that could easily be forgotten about just come to life mm -hmm. when they look at this wall and they saw these people painting. And you know, I, I you know me, I was running across the street like, hey, what y'all want to see on the wall, bro? Yeah. Like, just talking <laughs> to people, and they were like, who are you? <laughs> but, but, but I was like, this is this is great. And it shows how powerful art can be. Absolutely. How it can connect people if, even if you don't feel like you're an artist, once mm -hmm. you see it, it's so captivating. And um, I just think it's very ironic that the people didn't see the value of what you were doing at the time yeah. and painted over it like, yeah. Like less than a year? Didn't even try to find me. Less than they ain't call or nothing, they ain't take no pictures. Like, this <laughs> is the last time you're going to see this. <laughs> right. Like, nothing. Didn't try to ask who did it. You know, it's cool. It's really cool. But I was, I believe, like, Francesca probably has some of the most murals that were painted around downtown and is constantly in different spaces sharing her. So, you know, if there are any artists that have been through a moment where they're like, I just put my heart and soul into this yeah. and it hasn't worked, I think your journey is like a true testament when you really believe in your art and you believe in yourself. Yeah. And you just let it all come to you without forcing it. Mm -hmm. It's eventually going to happen. 
Absolutely. So that's that's a very, very important lesson. That's, you know, me looking at you, that's something that I learned too. I'm like, okay, I don't have to force anything. Yeah. And if anybody know me, I do what I want to do. <laughs> I'm stubborn. But it all works because I'm in my element. Mm -hmm. And being in your element takes you so much further because if you're constantly in a comforting state, you're going to be able to do what it is you do Absolutely. without thinking too hard. Absolutely. So yeah, that's that's a that's very very important. Thank you, Francesca. Yeah, um, I'm going to open it up for Q and A, but before we do that, um, we have a very special guest. We have another conversation happening next month, and it's going to be a very very interesting conversation because um, we're going to be diving into what it's like to be married to an artist. Mm -hmm. And one of the artists that we're going to be talking about is Walt Neal. I'm not sure if anyone knows who Walt Neal is, but uh, he was very well known for creating murals in Columbus, Ohio, before murals were a popular thing to do. Um, and as of now, that's the thing to do. Mm -hmm. But during that time, it just it wasn't really considered mm -hmm. art. It's like, mm -hmm. that's street art. That's not mm -hmm. you. That's not, but... Um, he definitely left behind a legacy, and there's so many things happening after his passing. Um, and Miss Denise Neal is making it all happen. So can everybody please give a round of applause? Is there anything you'd like to say, Miss Neal? Oh no, I'm scared to follow Francesca. Oh, please. <laughs> Listen, please, please. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that, if you're if you're going to come back next time, that's going to be a great conversation. Um, does anyone have any questions for Francesca or any comments about the conversation? Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, I I have a few questions, but you know, I have I always have a lot of questions, so I'll <laughs> ask one. Okay. How do you feel like? Um, what's the biggest way that your perspective on like your you say you've always known you're an artist and you've made art for a very long time mm -hmm. but what do you think is the biggest way in which your perception as an artist has changed from like your teenage years until now mm -hmm. That's a, that is a great question um there's a couple of ways one the first that comes to mind i was really focused on realism just like mm -hmm. i see something i to capture it the way that it was and that's just it was a one-way street in my mind but um over the years my mind has opened up like it's not all about skill it's not all about technique like that's not the sole thing it's about expression it's about real connection with your work and I feel like after so long of just doing pencil drawings I'm like it wasn't enough it wasn't like satisfying this thing in me that was like I, I want to feel something with my art too. Like it's great that I make it and you like the way it looks, but like I need to connect to it as well. And so it really took a lot for me to let go of like, get the details, get the details, accuracy. You know, it really did. Again, that was speaking to real life. Let go of that control. Like this phrase came to mind, like let the paint guide you. You follow it. When you start just pushing those colors around on the canvas, like, okay, you didn't mean to put brown and pink and yellow right there, but where was it trying to lead you? You know, what was the mystery that you were being led into with this art? Um, yeah, so, and now here we are. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot more fun. <laughs> it seriously is, and it just, like, lets, such, like, so much pressure off. My art can be therapeutic now as opposed to, like, again, that validation thing. Because you get criticized if you're saying, I'm trying to be a, a photorealistic artist. People are like, ugh, your proportions are off. You know what I mean? Where it's like, now I'm just expressing myself, so I don't care if you think my proportions are off. Like, maybe I, that's what I needed, you know, in that moment. So, yeah, I think that's one of the biggest ways. Yeah. Thank you for that question. Anybody else have a question? A lot of artists can be their biggest critics. Um, and it's really hard to shut the critic off mm -hmm. in our minds. Um, can you talk about um, if that applies to you? Um, how do you cope with it? How do you get past it? Um, or how do you stay with it? Great question. Um, 
So definitely, that is something I definitely relate to. <laughs> a fun fact, I really struggled with like these designs for these t-shirts with Abercrombie. I was scared, I mean, I was texting the creative team manager, whoever he is, every day, like, don't do it, don't do it. Like, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm nervous. He's like, it's fine, you know? Um, but yeah, that critic, that voice is extremely loud. Um, I think that sitting with it and like, like you said, allowing myself to sit and process, really think about like, okay, what are you being so hard on yourself about? Why do you feel this way about it? What do you not like about it? And does that even really matter? You know, um, and then this is where balance comes into play because I know I've been talking a lot about not caring about what other people have to say about your work, but there does come a time where the reassurance of those close to you or just who love your work does help. Um, so it's, it's a balanced thing. Like, yes, you don't let it validate you, but sometimes we just be tripping and we need that friend to tap you on the shoulder like, hey, it's actually fine. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> you're being very hard on yourself right now. Like, you're amazing. Um, and then it helps when you do share with the public and, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, these are beautiful. You know, whatever. Like, okay. All right, I guess it, it isn't that bad. I, I was really tripping. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just like finding that balance and knowing when to like share it with people who are safe, getting their feedback. Because there's even been times I've been very hard on myself. And sometimes the reassurance I needed for it from a friend was like, yeah, that wasn't the best. And I don't, it's really weird. I don't know why I would need that to like calm myself down. Um, but I think it's just like sharing it with people who know me and can give honest feedback. And I'm like, okay. It's like an acceptance thing. Because mm -hmm. sometimes with that voice being so loud, you're like all over the place. Ah, like what's going on, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I'm like, okay, wasn't my best. Why was it not my best? Where was I emotionally, mentally, and creating this? All right, moving forward. Like, I know with me, anxiety sometimes would come in and just, like, wrap its hands around my hands and be like, no. I know it's in your head, but you're not going to let it out on the campus today. So I'm like, what can I do to, like, get out of that space, you know? Or how can I work with that space, you know? Um, so I hope that answered your question. <laughs> Okay. I'll usually just be like, Francesca, shut up. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm about to tell everybody about you. So I text this man today and I said, Dante, I'm so nervous. What are we talking about again? And he said, Why? <laughs> you know what? As a matter of fact, he said, As a matter of fact, I'm glad you told me that because now I'm really about to blast it. And then I get a notification this man put the flyer up again and he's like, Come, come, no ticket needed. Just come. I'm like, You're petty. <laughs> But Dante knows me. That's a friend. He you knows me. Now I'll be tripping because then I get to him. I'm talking about I'm nervous, I'm scared, or whatever. And then it turns out great. Every time. Every time. Every time. <laughs> Any other questions? One back here and then over here. I, speaking of balance, and you seem amazing. And you oh. seem like you have a lot of energy. But how do you do music and painting? How do you fit all of this into your oh, life? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that's a that's a great question. Um, I go back and forth a lot, honestly, to be honest with you. So there are, I kind of just follow, I hate the phrase, follow my heart. It just feels so like, you know, but it's genuine. Sometimes I'm just listening to like what's going on inside of me. I, I know when it's time to put the brush down and pick up the music. Um, and I know when it's time to do both. And I think finding that balance is just a matter of like scheduling time. So for me, I know my prime time with my art is like 2 a.m. <laughs> so I wake up really early and I'll paint. And once I have all that going, then I can, um, you know, schedule my time for my music. So I like to practice guitar. I play guitar. I like to practice that for like 15, 30 minutes, a couple times a week. Um, it takes intentionality, definitely. But then it also helps being in spaces where both are required in the times when I feel the need. So right now I work at a summer camp. And I'm the visual arts instructor there, but I also lead the kids in like our singing time. We have these um, affirmation songs that me and some friends wrote. So I get to like do the musical thing in that same, and the art thing in that same space. So that helps. That's a lot. It is a lot. Yeah, I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could not. Y'all are gifted. I could, I could not do that. You know, when you look at any piece of art, it doesn't matter whether it's your piece or anything around the room. Mm -hmm. Like when I look at, when I walk through the museum, 
I try to put myself in the place. So what was the artist thinking? What what is their what does the the, the the artwork actually mean to them? Okay, so looking at your piece, I mean you explained you know the different colors and everything. Mm -hmm. But the expression on her face, mm -hmm. what does that expression mean to you? Why did you paint it like that? That's a great question. Um wow, that is actually a really great question <laughs> because to be honest with you, at this point, at the time of painting this, it was just, this is a reference photo, actually. Um, I think of everything in the painting, or in the picture rather, the woman's hair, like really stuck out to be the most. Um, and part of me, sometimes I like to paint where the eyes are not open and distinctive, because I feel like that helps any viewer connect to it, like something about, you know, covering up those eyes. Um, so I do, feel like that kind of was part of my intent with it. Um, definitely, like with just like I said, those eyes being closed. But also, her expression is just kind of like relaxed. You know, her, her, she's just like, I'm, I'm cool. <laughs> like, this is good, this is me. Like, don't, don't overthink my existence, don't overthink anything. Like, this is just me as I am, so. Yeah, I think that's that's what I feel when I look at her. Okay. Any other questions? I just have a, a comment on your looking at social media and, mm -hmm. and not seeing enough likes. How is social media affecting the art world? I mean, I, I, is that a bigger question that we should be looking at? Yeah, absolutely. That's a that's a deep dive right there. Um, so many things to be said, how it's affecting the artists, as well as how it's just affecting like just art in general, the way that we interact with it. Mm -hmm. um, are we ready for another talk? Mm -hmm. Can we schedule one for tomorrow? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, there's, there's a couple things that come to mind with that. Um, but I think in regards to my point earlier, just from like the artist standpoint, it's, it's a bit challenging when that's where we find our validation, that's kind of the audience that we focus on now, um, as opposed to beforehand where the focus, well I should say as opposed, I think a lot of us are still geared towards like pre prepping for shows in person, but with it being online, I feel like some people don't really care to come to see a person anymore, like oh, mm -hmm. I, I won't go to so-and-so show, I know they're gonna post it on Instagram mm -hmm. tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so there's a lot to be said about that, just as far as like, the artists, our connection with our work, and then how we see other people connect with it. Because I know another good example, a lot of times, all people hit is the like button. And you're like, a like? <laughs> <laughs> um, excuse me, you can heart this now, <laughs> you, you can comment, share, all of that, but all you see is the blue thumb, you know, and then you see the person, like, in person, and they're like, Francesca, oh my God. Like, I didn't even know you felt that way about it. All you gave me was a like, you know? So it's just like all of that as far as connection and just like, yeah, connection, communication. Social media is like this big wide gap. <laughs> There's some people, it's just not their thing. They love it. They're a major fan, but they're like, Mike, that's all I'm doing. Don't ask me for more. But when I see you, I'm going to hype you up. <laughs> you know? um, so like I said, that's just one of many angles. Now that's that's good because it that that's so interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even think about some of the things you said. Yeah. About how um, you can place so much validation in that before you know it, you're questioning your own art. Absolutely. It's like did I did I do good? Did you see a person yeah. like you're doing great? You're like, well, I don't feel that way. Yeah. But also, you know, we gotta check ourselves. It's like mm -hmm. I'm placing so much emphasis on if somebody presses a button. Exactly. Mm -hmm. When Sometimes in reality, people that do things for us, we don't even know who they are that they're on the way. Right. It might be beyond a like or a heart. Okay. Like, and what if they didn't like the other thing? What's that? What if they press the opposite? Exactly. You know I mean, that, yeah. It's exactly. so it's too much emphasis on that. It could be devastating. It's totally impersonal. Absolutely. It can have so, it can have a detrimental effect as well as a positive. Absolutely. And then obviously there's just so much that you get from interacting with artwork in person mm -hmm. that you miss on social media. Like it has to scale down. You know what I'm saying? Like 
even looking at art on my phone versus my computer is two different experiences totally. Like, I may take a picture on, on my phone and be like, oh, yeah, it's beautiful. I post it, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> like, you know, all this extra stuff, you know, on the computer, I'm like, wow, I missed that. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I said again, there is just so much to be said, but I think the biggest thing is like, it's just like a communication breach, really, uh, between the three, the artists, the art, and the audience. Yeah. I have a question. Did you have a mentor? Did I have a mentor? Or mentors? Uh, yes, I have quite a few. I do. Um, Richard Duart Brown yeah. being one of them. <laughs> so that was my previous guest, uh, her mentor, Duart. So we all connected, we all like family, but yeah. like they're all great artists, but you know, what what makes him somebody you consider to be a mentor? Yeah, so I love to call Duart my art dad. And the fun thing is like, I've learned a few things like technique wise from him, just a few, but what Duart does for me is he feeds like my artistic soul. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, Almost like maybe he should be Paul Paul instead of dad. You know how you go and hang out with your grandpa. He ain't seen him in like weeks, months, whatever. Um, he's like, come and sit down. You know, he might share a snack or two with you and just start spilling off all this wisdom. And it's just like every time I'm with him, he recenters me. He re like conversations with him remind me of like why I'm doing this. That my art is very missional. I think that he and I are kindred spirit in that regard. Like we love to make art that serves that serves people, that heals, that reflects people to themselves. Um, so, yeah, he is one of many. He is one of many mentors of mine. Um, I love that man. <laughs> what and what does it do to your art? What does it do? How does that show up in your art? Um, it definitely shows up now in the color scheme, for sure. That uh, free, expressive, he is one of the artists that really helped me segue into that just by looking at it, you know, just looking at his art and how it would make me feel. It just felt so free. And I was like, I'm too tight-handed. I'm too worried about proportions, making everything look perfect, like I said earlier. Um, and Duarte ain't tripping about that. He will grab a, a, a piece of a bitten celery. Right. And dip it, yes. <laughs> dip it in some paint and start smearing it over again. <laughs> you know, I was like, I gotta get the right paints, both in, you know, we gotta go to Blick, we gotta, whatever. And Duarte is like, I've had this paintbrush for 35 years. <laughs> it's fallen off, but I'm just duct taping it over. <laughs> but yeah, he just like, Watching him paint just showed me like it really is all within. Like it doesn't matter always about the tools that you're using. Um, sometimes what's right in front of you is just enough. Right. So, yeah, I'm I'm thankful for him. Duarte, if you're watching, I love you so much. Oh, he's gonna watch it. Don't worry. He's gonna watch. His sketches it. are coming soon. I <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. Uh, any other questions? Ah. Uh, Dang, I was about to ask you something, but I forgot that quick. Like, give me like 10 seconds to think, y'all. You got it, you got um, it. You got this. What was we just talking about before this? Duarte, and I Duarte. said I was going. Mentors. Yeah, social media. I got it. So, final question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talked about being a young artist. Yeah. How important is it for the next generation to know and understand a the artists that came before them and their mission and what they were doing. And you know, how important is it for the elders and the artists before the young artists to talk to them and share that story, that transfer, that transfer of um, culture and success, belonging. Yeah. How important is that to us as artists to make sure that that happens? That's a great question. Um, it's very important. Like, it's very, very important that bridge uh, between two generations. Um, I think, A, it speaks volumes. Like it just shows our connectedness and it just shows like this continuum of like, there's work being done, you know, by the older ones. There's a foundation that's already been laid. You don't have to go over here and build another building. There's space for you to build on top of so that this can continue on. Um, and it doesn't matter what your goal is per se. You know, if you're a young black anime artist, there's still something you can glean from the Amina Robinsons and Richard Duarte Browns and Queen Brooks and all of those, you know. 
um, and even you know some of the younger but older like April tsunamis things like that um, it doesn't matter like I said the style the arena whatever like there's something beyond just the product that you can learn um, and I think it's definitely the experiences their experiences speak volumes um, they're just the insight they have you know like they can I don't want to say warn you, but they can share their experiences that help give you some light as far as how to navigate the art world sometimes. So know? like when they when they got screwed over. Exactly. Treat it like exactly. crap. They can let you know, like, exactly. hey, be careful. Don't, yeah. don't, don't do this. Don't go there. Yeah. They that can warn it. you. Everything that glitters ain't gold. That's you know? Right. And sometimes we don't have the eyes to see that, yeah. you know? Um, but they do because they've been around for so long. Um, they've been doing, they've been in this game way longer than us. Um, and I think, like, I don't know, I'm just big on honor. You know, that's, that's a big, a very big important thing for me, honoring those who came before me. Um, and that's another thing that I feel like just makes room for all of the beautiful blessings that have come my way. Um, because they also have connections, you know what I mean? They have, like, things to say about as far as like they just have connections and they that can I think that honor opens the door for you to have those connections as well um, people pay attention to when you as a younger person have a relationship when you honor people who came before you it speaks volumes about your character um, it shows that I think I don't know it, it speaks volumes I'm gonna just leave it there because we'll be here all night right. <laughs> talking about that right. seriously right I got a thousand more questions, but <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. Look, look who's showing up at the last. <gasps> oh my god! Wow! Oh my god! It is me. Oh me. It's one of the giants. One of the <laughs> so, you know, I mean, that's what it's about. Yeah. So we we kind of wrap it up. I've been watching. Oh, you've been watching online. Awesome. Got you. But um, as I was saying, you know. I, I got a thousand questions, but my reason for asking that, mm -hmm. uh, you kind of touched on it. It seems like as things are shifting, the older artists that did not have opportunities yeah. to share their art in certain spaces or to go to different places, yeah. now that it can happen for younger people, it's important that they understand. Like you said, everything that, that glitter and gold. Absolutely. You could find yourself in a place where you feel like this is it. I made it. Yeah. I'm doing it. But you start to lose yourself. Mm -hmm. Um you can feel exploited. Absolutely. Yeah, you can feel like everything that you've done up to this point, no long you're no longer in control. Yeah. And that's something that I've learned mm -hmm. from a lot of the elders. Yeah. And I think it's important that we have those conversations and we connect mm -hmm. because if we don't, history is bound to repeat itself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. And when that happens, we're in the same position and mm -hmm. we just don't grow. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. I, I really think it's important that we have those conversations and I'm grateful mm -hmm. that I see you working with people that are younger than you. Because, you know, when we were younger, we looked at somebody that's 25, like, they old, right, man, right. they old. <laughs> but that's, it's the simple things. It's the, it's the moment of simplicity that helps you grow. Mm -hmm. It's not the big moments. Right. It's like, I'm here for you. Yeah. You have a question. I can yeah. answer that question immediately. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes people don't have money yeah. to, to, to get training or to get help. Sometimes it takes a person like you or people that came before us to say, I got you. Yep. Just whatever you need, any questions you have, I, I got you. Yep. Just don't hesitate to ask me. Absolutely. And there's a safety in it too. I will say that um, because sometimes, like, I don't know, when you're running with your peers, we all have the same kind of eye level. You know what I mean? Where as opposed to, like I said, the elders, so to speak, They've been doing this longer. They have way more insight. So sometimes you'll have your peers in your, in your head like, no, you should do this. No, you should ask for this much. No, you should go there. You should constantly be working, working, working because we're young. We all have that energy. Whereas the older are like, our elders are like, baby, slow down. You need to rest because you're going to burn out. <laughs> you know, I've been down this road before, you know. Or like I said, in my conversations with people like Duarte, they just recenter you. Like you're getting like, you're all the way over here. And Duarte, he doesn't even... 
look at me and say, hey, Francesca, you da 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 It's just, the man just start talking. <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> Oh, shoot. Like, you know, <laughs> he just start talking to you like, you all up in my closet, man. <laughs> like, like, dang, how did you read my journal last night? <laughs> but yeah, he, like I said, for me, like personally, because I know that my art is missional. I create very intentionally. The goal is to uh, impact. The goal is to like bring healing, bring joy, or just have conversation, like very intentional conversations. Um, and like I said, I know that he, he and I are kindred spirit in that way. So when I hear him talk, I'm like, yep, here I am. I'm about to go do anime, and I don't even really, that's not my world. <laughs> you know, I just saw that was a weird hire anime artist. So like, come on back over here. That's them over there. They got their lane, you know? Right, right. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, I'm thankful for all the elders. Like I said, he's not the only mentor, like, so many um, here in the city that I'm just really grateful for. Cool. I would give them all a shout out, but this is it's, all it's a whole list. Yeah, it's a whole list. They know who they are. Right. Right. I know I, I know I said I'm ending like 30 times. This is my but conversation. There, I mean like this is going so good. It makes me like everybody's having a good time. Is there any more questions that came up? For, yeah. Yeah, um let's say this thing. Um in the beginning you, you, you talked of um, a conflict of um being in a safe spot. Um where your where your art was um organized well defined, mm -hmm. you know, all that type of thing, and then and then you're, you're talking about this expressionism. Mm -hmm. This is a balance that I think a lot of people have to work out for themselves. Yeah. And and how did you do this? I mean, how do you? I, I know it hurts because you you want to have the, the points in the right spot mm -hmm. and everything just perfect, and then you have this feeling that this is how it should be. Yeah. What, what, how, how do you resolve this? Um, I know for me, the the freedom that came with the expressionism was like way more important than trying to get it right and impress people with good technique. Um, because like I said, I would be done like, oh man, that drawing is almost spot on. But then I would just feel empty because I'm like, I mean, it's cool, but like, it's the picture too. Like what more is being said here, you know? Um, I know I almost said something, but yeah, <laughs> I almost said something, could have been offensive to some singers, but anyway, um, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying anyway, it's almost like, and this is no shade to cover artists, because there's a room for it, but sometimes you can sing a song, you know, that somebody else wrote, and you're just like, well, that was great, but that's not my song, that's not my message, you know, I can't. I can connect in a way, but not fully. And I even have had that experience musically as well. Um, some songs, I'm like, hey, this is it. But it's not quite it. So I have to take time and sit with it. And like I said, just put myself into it. And so I feel like such is the same with the expression. Um, well, what do you do to overcome this? I mean, to overcome? To overcome the... Perfectionism. The perfectionism. Ah. Mm. Oh. That's a yeah. Great. <laughs> that's a really great. That is a... Um, <laughs> For me, I had to just fight against myself. Like in those moments where I felt the control trying to kick in, I was like, no, and that you have to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. You know, like I had to be like, oh my gosh, this is ugly. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, this is, you know. Um, but I, I would push through it anyway. Um, and that's just, I don't know, that's just what works for me. Like I said. <clears throat> Any other questions? Oh, that camera just shut off. Okay. It did. It's the bottom. Right. Are we? Any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's cool. Uh, so, Francesca, thank you for coming. Francesca. Uh, everybody's here. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, that's it. Um, so everyone that came, you got a sticker. That means you have VIP access, okay? So you can go in that exhibit right across from here, which is the Mina Robinson Gallery, or you can go anywhere in the museum. Don't go to the roof, though. <laughs> don't go on the roof, that, don't do that. But uh, if you do have time and you want to explore the museum, please do explore. 
And if you look over in this corner, there are boxes. Those boxes are called Amina Studio boxes. <coughs> so it takes some of the materials that she would use, inspired by her art, and you have the opportunity to kind of just get into your element of being like Amina, if you would like to, and uh, create something with that. So on your way out, be sure to grab one of the boxes. Um, once again, thank you for coming. Be on the lookout for the next talk featuring Ms. Denise and Neil. It's going to be great. Um, and with that, thank you. Good night and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.